On Saturday, it will have been exactly 20 years since the Columbine school shooting. 12 students and one teacher were killed by two seniors in Littleton, Colorado. The tragedy sparked national debates on gun laws, police response, and mental health, debates that are still ongoing today. Earlier, I spoke with Dave Cullen, the author of Columbine and Parkland, about the 1999 shooting and its impact. Here we are two decades after Columbine, and in some ways so much has changed, and in other ways so little has changed. If you would take us back to that moment in 1999 when you were one of the first reporters on the scene, what made that school shooting such a pivotal moment in history? Well, Columbine wasn't the first school shooting, but it was the first horrific one. And in fact, it was more powerful, had more impact because there were small, I hate to say smaller ones, but there were leading up to it. So there was, uh, you know, a few people killed here and a few there. So there was a sort of simmering fear in America. Uh, because the reason it has so much more lasting impact than, say, um, Oklahoma City is that felt like a one off, like nothing like that had happened. So it was like, maybe this is an aberration. With Columbine, because there was a shooting and a shooting, it was simmering fear, a little more fear, a little more fear. And then this just horror happened and America really freaked out and realized because, you know, it's a trend, it's an ongoing thing. And just this massive ex escalation, not just 13 murdered, but we, we discovered very quickly that there were uh, two big bombs in the cafeteria and others like, they were trying to kill many hundreds or a thousand, more than a thousand. Like if those bombs had worked, more than 600 people would have died instantly. So the scale of this and the horror, for the first time really American parents were afraid to, to bring to send their kids to school. Uh, that, that changed everything. Of course, since Columbine, there have been several mass shootings, several school shootings, most recently Parkland in 2018. You wrote about that as well with your most recent book. These two massive school shootings happened under two different administrations, the first one under the Clinton administration, the second, of course, under the Trump administration, two different reactions. I want to play what President Clinton said right after speaking with the Littleton County Commission Chair, Patricia Holloway. Let's listen. I think that uh, Patricia Holloway would not mind if I said that amidst all the turmoil and grief uh, that uh, she and others are experiencing, she said to me uh, just a moment ago that uh, perhaps now America would wake up to the dimensions of this challenge if it could happen in a place like Littleton and we could prevent anything like this from happening again. We pray that she is right. If you need help, turn to a teacher, a family member, a local police officer, or a faith leader. Answer hate with love. Answer cruelty with kindness. We must also work together to create a culture in our country that embraces the dignity of life, that creates deep and meaningful human connections, and that turns classmates and colleagues into friends and neighbors. Again, two different shootings, two different presidents. Each one had a massive school shooting under his watch. What did you What did you see were the differences between how each president handled it? Dramatically different. I, I've forgotten the Clinton uh, clip. I, I, you know, it came right back. But uh, that's just really uh, frustrating to see. You know, saying like, you know, hopefully this will make us will be the wake up call. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> Um, you know, and like, th th this should be enough. And we did nothing for 20 years, really for, for 19 years, we did nothing until Parkland. Um, God, that's, you know, why did we wait? All, all those children who've died. Um, and then the second clip, I I'm sorry, that is just like wishing it away, praying it away, let's be nice to each other, the Hallmark card. Uh, that's not leadership. We need to do something, not just like, let, let's play nice. Well, of course kids should be nice to each other. And, Come on. And so now, March for Our Lives. Tell us about that movement and how the folks at Littleton, who you're still in touch with, have responded to this. Yeah, I mean, that, that really changed the equation. Finally, something's happening. And, you know, I like to say, you know, Columbine wasn't the first school shooting, and Parkland already isn't the last, but they're hopefully bookends of an era where, or, or, 
combat really started the mass shooter era, and Parkland is hopefully the beginning of the, of the end or, or the way out. I remember so vividly Connie Sanders, who is the daughter of Dave Sanders, the one heroic teacher who died saving children at uh, Columbine. He, you know, ran toward the. Um, gunfire until he was taken down. His daughter's been fighting for 19 years, and um, you know she texted me last spring saying, uh, David, it's really happening. After all this time, finally, we dreamed of this. And and I think we don't lost hope. I had, she had, I think America had lost hope. And uh, the Parkland kids gave us hope again. And I know gave a lot of the, the survivors hope. Can you speak to the different reactions among the students? after the Columbine shooting and after the Parkland shooting? It was night and day. And for Columbine, what's really seared into my memory is day two. Because day one is exactly what you would expect. It was chaotic, people sobbing, crying, you know, clutching, like reuniting, and kind of what you would imagine, pandemonium. Day two was completely different. I got there at 10 in the morning and there were no tears. And the boys especially, there was like no emotions. They were, uh, you know, psychologists call it uh, blank affect. Um, they had, and I was afraid to talk to them about it at first because I didn't want to, like, you know, psychoanalyze them. It turned out like they really wanted to talk about it because they were really scared to death. At Parkland, I did not see one blank affect. Those kids, so many of those kids said, uh, I was kind of expecting it. We always, you know, our school or somebody else's school. It, they literally grew up, they were born after, after Columbine. They went to kindergarten or preschool doing lockdown drills. That's just their life. Sometimes you get murdered at school. Oh, uh, right? That's terrifying. That's the horror. And I, you know, I think adults lose sight of that. And that's why those kids are so angry and started mm -hmm. out angry, because they know that is wrong.